As police minister Figide Mbalula embarked on a post in Seko cleanup campaign, should the public be comfortable with the uncordial relationship between IPID and the SAPS? Is it legally permissible for General Ntemeza to go back to his position? Why is Popku saying the case against police uh, acting National Commissioner General Pasani should be speeded up? What time is it? It's question time. Koto, welcome to the show. My name is Paul Sadie. Embattled ex Hawks boss General Benning Semeza has filed for a restraining order against Police Minister Figile Mbalula in breaking news. Nsemeza has been in the news after Mbalula relieved him of his duties last week, appointing General Yoli Samatakata as acting Hawks head. The police minister waged a scathing attack on Nsemeza for reporting for work yesterday. He has, or he was warned to return state property, including a state car. He had instructed officials to hand him, which he apparently did. A legal expert says Ntemeza is permitted to go back to his position pending the outcome of his appeal. For its part, Police Union Pop Crew says the Hawks should be more concerned with policing than politics. Pop Crew has called for a speedy resolution to the pending case involving acting police commissioner lieutenant general Komuto Pasani. we are live and therefore you can call us and there you've used the numbers to dial 89 our twitter handle at question time 24. my guest today richard mamabulo is the spokesperson at the police and present civil rights union pop group that is and orish ru is a legal expert and uh, they're joining me today in studio and we indeed will be welcoming your calls throughout this show gentlemen welcome to the show let me start with you legally i mean there have been all sorts of interpretations i guess that's the law it's uh, up for interpretation um, would you say General Ntlemeza was right to go to work yesterday? Well, I think we must uh, take a brief look at the history of the matter. And uh, when General Ntlemeza was appointed mm. in 2015, the Helen Suzman Foundation and the Freedom Under Law Foundation immediately launched an application to say that his appointment was unlawful. Yeah. In 2017, the High Court in Pretoria adjudicated on that matter and handed down an order to say that it was unlawful. Mm. He then immediately appealed that. His application for leave to appeal was dismissed. Uh, but then the Helen Suzman Foundation went one step further and they applied for what we call uh, uh, in the industry an execution order. Yeah. And that execution order dictates that uh, regardless of whether there's any appeal processes pending, the High Court order should take immediate effect. The problem with that is, is that uh, Section 18, Subsection 4, of the Supreme Court Act states that when an ex execution order is applied for, the person who is aggrieved by it, in other words, General Plameza in this instance, has an automatic right to appeal that execution order mm -hmm. and that the status quo should remain pending the outcome of that appeal. So in other words, he is to remain in his position pending the outcome of that appeal. Section 18, subsection 4 goes one step further to say that the appeal should be heard and should be finalized as a matter of extreme urgency. So, uh, you know, as much as, as the minister says that he was not entitled to return to work and as much as the public wants to believe that, unfortunately, uh, Section 18, Subsection 4 of the Supreme Court Act of 2013 says that he can. And, and we, unfortunately, cannot just disregard the law. Yeah. So General Tlemeza returning to work yesterday, he was uh, fully entitled to do so. So the story around the car having to be returned and you know him not being allowed to do his work and all that, that's illegal. Well, obviously, there's, uh, there's all sorts of intricacies now. Uh, <coughs> you know, uh, acting head of the Hawks has been appointed. Uh, she's obviously assumed her position, and now uh, General Tlemeza returns to his position. So who is now actually head of the Hawks? Is he entitled to use state-owned vehicles and cell phones? Those are, are policies and procedures uh, that need to be dealt with internally by the police and their structures. But... Uh, all the, the only thing that is clear in terms of the act is that he is entitled to remain in his position 
until the Supreme Court of Appeal has made a finding. I think what we also mustn't forget is that uh, upon him applying for leave to appeal, the High Court dismissed his appeal, saying that the chances of success are slim to none. Yeah. So him returning to work could be of mere academic importance. Um, you know, but I, I think that it's important also not to lose sight of the fact that the High Court, uh, in making a finding upon whether he was appointed legally, found that he was not even on the shortlist when he was chosen as head of the Hawks. He, his appointment was completely irregular. Uh, it did not follow any procedure. He was found to be a person uh, who did not possess of the moral and ethical standards to be appointed as head of the Hawks. He was found to be a person who lied under oath whilst giving testimony in a high court. And these things cannot simply be disregarded. These are, are issues which a court found upon and yet we have this person returning to work. So it's certainly an anomaly that we are faced with at the moment. And uh, I think that everyone is, uh, is keen for the Supreme Court of Appeal to make a finding as soon as possible so that all of this confusion can be uh, done away with. What is Papu's uh, standpoint in this matter? Look, I think uh, everybody can interpret the law in their own way. Of course, there are different interpretations that have been there. But uh, our understanding on this matter has been that uh, since the minister pulled out, pulled out his uh, appeal, uh, you remember the minister withdrew his appeal, uh, uh, we have not heard of any appeal from Mr. Ntlemeza. But again, if that is the case that he did... Uh, 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 yeah, the, Supreme, the Supreme Court has yes, confirmed. Yes, uh, apparently last week, Friday. Mm. Uh, you remember that uh, the, the, the minister had appointed an acting head of Hawks uh, before then. Our understanding would be then be that uh, if that's the case, we agree that, uh, of course, if there is an appeal lodged, of course, the judgment should be set aside. Now, uh, our thinking is that it is the minister, the minister's prerogative then to say, since we do have a an acting head of Hawks, uh, they can then place Mr. Ntlemeza at a position that is the, premier, uh, the, 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 the minister's prerogative. They can place him in a different post as long as he does not uh, hinder his uh, employment conditions. Okay, hold it. The Elvis, you are in Midrand. Welcome. Hello, Mpo. Hello, Mpo. Hi. The guest there. Yes, welcome. Yeah. Um, so the Ntlemeza issue is a problem in this sense. Okay. Um, that, uh, you know, um, the minister and the president, that it tells you that they, they don't have the capacity. Because you need to follow the protocols. Like, for instance, when you appoint an acting person, before you get rid of that acting person, apart from um, uh, the legal aspect of it, you need to know what are the process that need to be followed. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have acting, and now he appointed another you know, head of the hawks. It's a problem. So it tells you that these people, they are lying to themselves. They are, they are drunk with power. They think when they wake up in the morning, they can make any changes whatsoever as they wish. And remember, the state provides them with a legal aspect within their departments, whereby when they need to make, uh, you know, decisions, they need to call these legal teams and say, how do we move from here? And they, they get a legal, you know, um, opinion mm -hmm. to say, this is how we are going to move. Unfortunately, they have to pay two salaries now. They are appointed and the suspended one. And at the expense of the, of the government, and it tells you clearly that ANC is drunk with power, they don't know what to do, and they are incapable. Unfortunately, uh, uh, in this one, you know, we have to suffer with Inclamera sitting there, going up and down, and you have another one who's sitting there. As they've said, if you have someone in the office and you have someone outside, and according to law, the person has to come to work and do his duties. Now you have to two, two people. Okay. The other one that is appointed, if you need to be dismissed, there is a salary involved. This is a problem. Thank you very much for that point. Well, indeed, this is... I mean, coming to think of it, um, you have at SAPS, you have an acting commissioner because the uh, commissioner, Ria Piecha, is still uh, being paid. Um, now you have an acting head of the uh, Hawks, whilst the head is also there. So, yeah, there's a lot of actors. I agree. You know, you look at all of these press conferences being called and all of the, uh, I don't want to belittle it, but it's, it's like sideshow shenanigans and it's grandstanding in my opinion. All of that is going on and we should be focusing on fighting crime in this country and that should be the prerogative of the minister. Uh, and I agree that these issues must be dealt with as swiftly and as expeditiously as possible. Uh, you're sitting with, as the caller indicated, uh, you know, the, a person has been appointed as the acting head mm -hmm. of the Hawks, and now suddenly 
the head of the hawks has returned. Uh, and according to the law, he's entitled to return. So the minister should never have appointed the acting head of the hawks in the first place. Kenneth, you are in Sunnyside. Welcome. Thank you, Mpo. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call. Yes. Mpo, well, the issue with St. Clement, uh, I think uh, the minister himself, he actually, he didn't actually get uh, proper advice the way he handled this matter. He should have got some legal advice before even approaching Mr. or the Hawks premises yesterday. So with regard to that, you can see that we still lack, or I'm sure maybe he's still within that, you know, spot portfolio, which uh, I think he needs to go and do some homework with regard to this, because it, will, it might cost uh, the, 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 the minister as well. Okay, Kenneth, well, thank you very much for that call. Kulu, yeah. um, who is to blame for that? Look, I think uh, part of the problems that we have seen within the subs, and of course these uh, acting positions have, have firstly cost the taxpayers a lot of money, but secondly you find people who get uh, to be acting, well, to these acting positions and then start fighting for positions at that level, you see. We have seen that happening in the last, well, uh, with the last minister, of course, and that has gotten so rife that uh, the focus on policing is no longer there, but uh, focus is on entrenching their positions in the hope that some would be appointed uh, uh, full-time commissioners and uh, also on. So that has been part of the problem. What has happened, in fact, in the last few years was that uh, the reason why police were so demoralized and, of course, had no direction as, as to how to act to combating crime was because of precisely that you have uh, those at the top only promote, promoting uh, uh, senior top leadership of, uh, of the SAPS uh, that bloated the structure. Whilst on the ground there's nothing happened. But okay. we are also glad that the minister has made a commitment that uh, uh, we will have police officers doing the work on the ground. And of course I think generally police are excited that we've got a new minister who's going to bring about change. We think okay. that those are some of the elements which should be uh, addressed. Zero eight nine one one zero four two one zero. Our Twitter handle at question time two four. Those are the mediums uh, through which you can participate in this program. We're taking a quick break. When we return, we continue this discussion about General Ntlemeza. What do you think? Was he right to go back to work uh, or not? This is question. This distinguished CEO would say the best way to enjoy a brandy is whilst wearing diamond-encrusted lamb's wool socks, accompanied by the smell of fresh money. Woo! <laughs> really? Sock diamonds? Well, we'd say a brandy enjoyed with last night's pizza works just as well. Get a bottle of KWV 5-year-old plus 1 litre Coca-Cola or Schweppes for $149.99 from Tops at Spa. So what can be made of the various utterances made by the police minister concerning General Ntlemeza and indeed is, uh, you know, General Ntlemeza allowed to report back to work and as you have heard legally, yes, he is supposed to. But uh, the numbers to dial 89 at question time 24 is the uh, Twitter handle you can use. But now, the minister then has been making a lot of statements about General Ntlemeza. Uh, does it give an impression that um, he is there to, well, to clean up on what uh, the previous minister had done? Because the previous minister was really on, on uh, General Ntlemeza's side. Uh, he was his force, if I may use the language. Um, 
What do you make of this? Look, we don't we don't think uh, the minister has got any ulterior motive against uh, Mr. Ntlemeza. You would remember that, of course, the court of law took the decision that uh, his appointment be set aside. Uh, I, I would imagine that the minister was merely following those uh, recommendations as made by the courts, and I don't think it would have anything to do with cleaning up. Of course, we need a lot of cleanup within the SAPS if we were to get it right. And, of course, I think uh, through what the minister has said thus far, regardless of, uh, of the Nklemeza issue, has been signifying the fact that we are indeed uh, working on a new path. It's a breath of fresh air for us. Uh, many of our police officers, of course, are excited that we've got uh, somebody who's uh, eager to ensure that there are changes that are going to make sure that uh, we improve policing in South Africa, but also improve the conditions of the police officers themselves. Okay. Mshengu, you are in Pretoria West. Yes. Welcome. All right. Get ngikuntle they're saying, look, why does everything in this country have to go through the courts? The court would have not allowed for this man to be suspended if it knew that the laws is on his side. So why do we have to really go through courts on each and every point that, um, you know, we... We, we have to resolve in this country. Well, I guess people have rights, and you can't deny General Ntlemeza his rights. Yes, of course, and uh, I think as much as people are frustrated, we have to be a country and a society uh, who abides the law, and, and if there's an act which stipulates something, then, then that act is binding, mm. unfortunately, regardless of, of what the perception is of that person. Uh, and I can understand the frustration of people out there. You know, um, I, I would also think that uh, we would be very foolish to think that General Tlemeza's appointment was not politically driven. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is he's the person who, who basically uh, drove for, for uh, the prosecution of, of ex-minister Pravin Gordon to take place. Uh, he's also the person who wasn't even on the shortlist to be appointed as the head of the Hawks okay. and suddenly was appointed. Uh, the previous minister wanted to appeal the court decision to have him removed and, and the current minister has taken away that appeal. So unfortunately you know, at the moment, uh, politics in South Africa is very rife and, uh, and it finds itself in every sphere of governance, in my opinion. Miles, you are in Ronfontein. Welcome. Yes, how are you, Paul? I'm well. Thanks for the call. Good, man. Yeah. Um, you know, our problem in South Africa is that we started appointing people politically instead of people to Senate to who... who who actually qualifies for the right positions. No, but we are General Ntlemeza qualifies. Yeah, but we are taking ministers who takes over from the other ministers who are politically appointed. Oh, okay. Who don't know the, 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 the right to what, what to do on those positions while you come from sports and you go to Minister of Finance or you go from the other, other way. Mm -hmm. Why can't we in South Africa appoint people according to the qualifications that you have. That's the problem we're going to have all the time until we start appointing people who really are qualified for the positions. Okay, Miles, thank you very much yes. for, for that uh, comment, Miles, the calling us from Ranfontein. Well, today then the minister says, um, you know, he's trying to get a rejig in the South African police service.
Yeah, of course. Uh, the minister spoke to a number of issues that uh, we have always raised. Uh, we have always had uh, concern about, you know, uh, for example, the issue around uh, mobilizing communities to fight crime. We think that is important, of course, uh, in the long and in the short term. Uh, part of the studies that we have conducted uh, well within our research team at Pop Crew have shown that uh, in areas where police work well with communities, crime statistics tend to go down. And of course, in areas where there are no relationships at all, uh, crime statistics things are high so okay now i'm sorry to just uh, jump in there talking about this community uh, partnership with the, the the police and all that how do you expect the community to really join up with the police force whom every day we see they are fighting with ip and you know fighting with uh, the heron Sussman foundation and all that that is why we're saying the mess at the top there needs to be dealt with urgently. And of course, we do trust that the minister will do exactly that. So that when communities view police, they do not see them as some people who are, of course, conniving or rather being components of criminal activity. So we, we, we of course, uh, have, as Pop Crew, of course, started projects to ensure that uh, we work closely with communities. There should be dialogue between co not only communities, but all stakeholders, something okay. which has failed to happen in the past uh, through other ministers. Hold it there. Let's take uh, Mabuka. Mabuka, you're in Zanin. Yes, sir. Welcome. Uh, the issue in Zemeza, you want something. Zemeza is telling us, us about something new. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it before. I don't know if I'm going to but we 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 Oh, Mabuga, oh, Mabuga, Zamai, Vigisano, Goa, Balena, Kolodzinia, Narvo, Nor, Nar, David, Sanaga. Well, Mabuga, they're saying, well, why is General Temeza worried about legal issues against him? That's what he was doing to others. Actually, he must firstly ask himself uh, the question uh, around his invalidated appointment. That's generally what Mabuke was saying. Well, she was saying that Ntlemeza has a right to do his job since his case is still pending. Now, with two heads of the Hawks, who gives the orders? Well, I guess that's a good question. Baseta, uh, um, Mr. T. Barentleko is the root cause of this problem uh, because of the appeal he lodged. Now, he... He's gone, uh, leaving Balula with the hot potato. Uh, whereas uh, Gozimas there on our Twitter handle says, Ria Piaka is still getting her salary. Ntlemeza as well. Even the new acting uh, Hawks head salary has been increased. Well, yeah, that's correct. That's uh, what has to happen. Uh, Gaddafi Chipape says, tackle the ball, not the men. Viva Ntlemeza. Well, okay. Well, that's somebody who obviously agrees with uh, Ntlemeza. And in terms of the law, that's Baseta again. And uh, Ntlemeza can go back to work. Uh, the halabaloo about him being uh, fired is nothing but that. A halabaloo. But, um, gentlemen, we are almost uh, running out of time. Um, the morale of the police um, is affected. <coughs> IP, like I said, is fighting uh, to get the head of the police off the roll. Uh, obviously, Benning Clemens is also in line and all that. Yes, I think uh, Minister Fakila Mbalula, you know, he's a very enthusiastic minister and, and I think that he's really come out and he's made a stance, uh, you know, about how he's going to, to tackle all of these things, corruption mm -hmm. and crime and all of that. And, and I think he's got a very difficult task ahead of him. If you look at the, uh, you know, the past police commissioners uh, such as Becky Tele, mm -hmm. um, Ria Piecha, Jackie Salebi, unfortunately, it is a very difficult task. Uh, Richard Mdluli, these are all people who have who have been uh, uh, ousted from the police in, uh, in, in, in difficult circumstances. Uh, and, and it's certainly something that Mr. Fakil Mbalula will have to deal with, so to try and get the morale of the police high, but also 
for society to to see the police as a as a as a law abiding entity and as an entity who is there to protect our rights and to fight crime their main priority gentlemen thank you very much uh, for having made time and that was question time for today a big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show from me